what one thing I think that is going to happen is <clears throat> that, and which I think is going to be spectacular because you know it's easy to get on the dark side of this shit. But you know, it's like when I w- I interviewed um, one of my favorite interviews was with this guy who uh, worked at this place called Singularity University up in San Francisco. It's Ray Kurzweil, Peter Diamandes, the Google people, just basically the techno Illuminati were, you know, have this place. I don't know if it's still there up in San Francisco where they're sort of trying to figure out what the fuck's going to happen when computers, you know, wake up and they uh so and it's it's not just like a philosophical exploration it's for it's a business exploration because if you're running a business you need to understand what the technological landscape is going to look like next year two years from now three years from now so you can begin to plan for that and start actually inventing shit based on technology that doesn't exist yet but that is going to exist and so uh otherwise you're way behind behind the curve and you're fucked and so when I went in there, man, this was years ago. They had just done a seminar and they had all these grease boards up that had shit written on them. I wish I'd taken pictures of it, man, because they fucking it was like a, a map of the next goddamn 10 years. It, it, all these predictions, they all came true. And I remember looking at them in those days and thinking, that's pretty weird. For example, they were writing like, what are the dangers of this? Uh, that, 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 what, what do we have to worry about? in the next you know five years and one of the things they wrote down was what happens in a society where everyone's being surveilled where everyone's being recorded where everyone's being digitally tracked whether they know it or not if in you know five years a law changes and people broke the law five years before the law became a law but they're on video breaking the fucking law right now that was loosely loosely they were predicting me too which is that suddenly uh you know what i mean they were predicting they were talking about what happens if social changes happen very quickly and people have you know records of doing shit that becomes socially uh completely impermissible what's gonna happen and you're looking you we saw it we saw what happened is all these fucks who were like operating as like complete scum and who were depending on people not being able to connect and talk about it they all got fucked completely from that and that that wasn't the only thing that they were talking about the other thing they were talking about that was really spooky joey is that um as technology becomes more amplified the ability for radicals to cause damage in society is going to exponentially increase meaning that uh genome editing for example was going to become increasingly less expensive to get the equipment you need to do genome editing so you could start doing like crispr shit dna shit in your fucking you know warehouse that you're renting for a thousand dollars a month you could get all the equipment you needed for maybe a hundred thousand dollars as opposed to millions and millions and millions of dollars essentially what we're doing with podcasting right now we've all become our own tv stations we've all become our own networks we've all and to do that you know 20 years ago would have cost you countless millions of dollars so anyway man it was like a really creepy thing because he's like eventually it's going to be that any individual on the planet is going to get to the point where they might be able to launch their own satellite or shoot down satellites you know so this was like a thing they were talking about but that the the main thing he said is the reason we any of this shit is happening is because of market pressure you know people want faster phones and because you want faster phones it's putting all this money into studying like artificial intelligence you know like you look on instagram and you can do that dumbass thing where you get the dog ears it just tracks it to your head dude 10 years ago that would have taken all day long if you wanted to try to do that tracking right now it does it instantaneously right it's insane we just take it for granted that's an ai that's doing that by the way so what i think the silver lining of this is is that there is now an intense market pressure to recreate the performance stage in virtual reality i'm not saying the sad way that people are trying to do it now and you know my hat my hats off to flappers or whoever the fuck's trying to do stand-up comedy shows on zoom it's just not going to work i don't think that's going to necessarily work but i think that we're going to see the emergence of some kind of technology that isn't shit 
that is going to let people perform. I don't know if it's VR. I don't know what it is without having to worry about getting COVID. And also, if they if we do get that, holy shit, man, that's like the best thing that ever happened to stand up comedy. Like if you could recreate the original room digitally and actually do it, even come close to it the reverb in the room, all that stuff can already be recorded, man. I use um, software that can duplicate famous sound stages, like places where the Beatles recorded and shit. They go in there and look at the geometry, look at the acoustic quality, and they can digitally replicate that. So you can get the reverb in the same place that, you know, the White Album was recorded or whatever, right? This is what I'm you thinking. Can, what's I'm that? thinking, this is what I was thinking. I'm thinking when it comes to comedy, this is my... This is an option, not for guys like you and I, but for option for the Chappelle's, the Rogan's, the Burr's. I'm in contact with a well-known manager to a music band, one of the best bands in the world. We met by mistake, and we talked three days a week. And, you know, Live Nation, because of the money and everything, they were talking of doing the tour, but virtual the whole tour would be virtual. So you sit in your fucking house and you watch this fucking uh, concert, whatever. I like it, but I don't like it because I like energy from people. Yeah. Stand up is 62% energy from people. Yeah. You know, I, I want to see a waitress slip and a glass break, you know? So yeah. this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking... A guy like me in a year and a half could do an improv and sell out the weekend. But the reason why I can't do the theater is because they're going to go so backed up with the heavier duty comics. Uh, Yeah. So I'm also prepared. This guy from this band, they're going to use this service. And the service is basically... What can you put in the room, Duncan? 300 people? Put the 300 in. Put the service in and allow it to the whole state for that night. Yeah. So they have an 8 o'clock show and a 10 o'clock show. They could either pay 12.50 to watch it live or, you know, I don't know, 12.50 the next day if they missed it, you know. Yeah. That might be an option. I mean, they're talking about a thousand things, but the problem is we're going into the unknown not knowing. Yeah. That's the biggest problem we have right now. If I could look you in the face and say, guess what? This thing is going to be over in October. Then you and I could talk. You and I, we no, we could jerk off to October 15th, and then we got to start making projects for this fucking note October 1st. Yeah. They're not telling you that. No. They're selling you it's going to come back strong with the flu, different uh, mutations, and we're still talking about maybe just missling China to death, you know, which is an option also that people have no idea could be because not everybody's happy with China right now. Right. You know what I'm saying? Well, all it needs is three motherfuckers to say, I'm not happy with the meat. How about you, Duncan? They got to go. That's it. We'll call our other three friends, and all of a sudden it's fucking the year of the fucking firecracker. So yeah. we don't know what we're going into. I don't, your child is 16 months. My child is seven. She's going back to school August 18th. But it's already proposed that she's not going to see a classroom until January right. of 2022, guys. That's right. I do not feel comfortable with that whatsoever i have gone from being a comedian (laughs) r-rated comedian with a ged to an assistant principal gym teacher slash entertainment arts director yeah yeah you know interesting i love what i'm doing but the child needs more yeah right the child needs that intercommunication yeah she fucking skypes with her buddies and she FaceTimes with her kids, but you need to get thrown to the floor. You need what it feels like to fall off a tree. Yeah. You know, so I'm worried about a lot of things. I'm worried about those things more than I don't give a fuck about stand up and when it comes back. 
Right. He'll come back when it's ready. You know what? Elton John's making a comeback. Yoko, <laughs> talk to Frankenstein's uncle. <laughs> They're bringing him back in 2002. You know, this just bought people time. For me, this bought us time. Just bought us time to get naturally brain healthy again. Yeah. The last 10 years have been he heavy for people. You've gotten yeah. married. You moved to New York. You lived in Pasadena. You yeah. got married. You had a kid. You sold the show. Yeah. When was the last time you sat and thought for, for a minute when you were in high school, that summer right, before man. you left? Yeah. You're going to look, call me one day and go, hey, man, we got picked up, but I could do this in Oregon and save 62000 a year in taxes. I yeah, love man. you to death. I got a house with an extra bedroom. You're always welcome with mercy. You know, yeah. let, right now you got to look at percentages. You're looking at least dense populations. Yeah, me and you right now, Duncan, we should get money, get Lee, and just invest in fucking buying people out in New York for dirt because they want to get out of the buildings. We can become slumlords and wait five years for those buildings to come up and COVID to be forgotten about. By that time, Arabs will be fucking you in the ass with hummus is lube anyway. <laughs> What are you worried about COVID for? You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, there's a lot of things we could be doing, but...